Hi all, I thought I'd try my luck again in the afternoon. I think I'm logged in, yep. <laughs> Alright, let's try D4 again since it's been such a major challenge to get any opening advantage. Um, I'm kind of interested to see if I can, in one game, get an advantage out of the opening. Okay, he's played A6. Uh, okay, can I keep the bishop on that um, dangerous diagonal? Um, do I risk playing knight e5? Knight takes d e. Um, is that any good? He's got knight e4, bishop e7, queen e7, he'd probably equalize. Maybe it's safer just to play queen e2 and e4 and leave the rook to go to d1. So if c5, I can sort of have pressure on the d file. I mean, I'll go for that plan, queen e2. So just e4 and rook d1 is the idea. But here, do I want to uh, let him play for c4? If I play e4, then c4 is possible. And then later, in fact, or oh, then bishop c2 protecting e4, so b4 wouldn't win the e4 pawn immediately. Um, so e4, I lose a bit of the dark square grip though. c takes, knight takes, and he's got some dark square grip. I think mean, I'll go for it anyway. I'll play e4. He's got knight c5 though, that could be annoying. Alright, I'll just protect with. Actually, do I want to use this rook? Mind you, f2 will be weaker. So if bishop c5 is, is getting f2, I'll use the other rook actually. So really, this is looking a bit like a Sicilian by transposition with the semi-open c file. So maybe something like king h1 to safeguard this diagonal, and then f4 with the idea maybe of like f5 to try and weaken this diagonal when he castles. Maybe that's a good idea. Um, so king h1 and f4. Mind you, he's always got this b4, but at the moment b4, knight a4 gets a tempo on his queen. So I can potentially do this king h1. Alright, so if bishop h4, has he got knight e4? But then bishop e7, it seems a bit too risky for his king. So I'll let him play, if, if that exists, that tactic, knight e4. I don't think I need to be that worried about it. Just, I'll just give him a pawn. Um, in fact, if he castles here, e5, it's almost winning a piece because of that pin, but then knight d5. Ah... Okay, so here, he's embarrassing my knight on d4. Can I actually play e5? So bishop d4, e f, and then maybe knight takes e6. Could be quite dangerous. I think I'm going to give that a go, actually. e5, yeah, to try and open you know, this line against this king, which hasn't castled yet. So I'm trying to punish his king in the center. Um... What am I talking about, though? He's got e6 covered with his queen. But there is knight d5 here, which seems dangerous in many respects. Uh, attacking his queen. If bishop d5, bishop d5. So attacking his rook. Um, but where is the attack now? I think it's fizzled out. Oh dear. So, um, is there any attacking move here which would be useful? Also, my bishop is empery there, so I think I need to bail out here with uh, bishop g3. And this is anything better. I think bishop g3. Right, I'll try and keep this this bishop, you know, on the diagonal, quite kind of dangerous. Maybe if it goes to c2, then queen e4 will be dangerous. Um, knight c5, bishop c2. He could exchange rooks and play rook d8. Um, yeah. Actually, I'm threatening, actually, I've got d6 control here. I'm threatening, like, maybe bishop d6 or rook d6 just to double on the d file. But he's, with his bishop, though, he's always protecting that. So what about just rook c1, actually? So threatening bishop c7. If knight c6, maybe queen e4, then knight d4, though. Ah. So, um, in, knight, knight d4 is an annoying threat anyway. So, um... So I'll, I'll play. I'll play this actually. Just if knight d4, maybe bishop d1. Um, and at least I've got the threat then of bishop c7. So knight d4, bishop d1, threatening bishop c7. But then he might just play rook c8. Um, it's difficult to dislodge that knight on d4. That's the problem. Um, on the other hand, so wh where can my bishop go? Okay, this bishop's. Um, seems to be a bit better than, than, than this one at the moment. Now, how long is his knight going to stay on d4, though? Is it going to be to the end of the game? Um, I'll try and actually pr 
playing a provocative move just to try and get a weakness. I think bishop h5. I know it's a ridiculous looking move, but at least I'm protecting the c1 rook. Um, and if I can provoke g6 just to create some weakness, then bishop takes fg, queen g6, bishop g7, bishop e5 would be dangerous, attacking the knight and threatening mate. Okay, so here he's attacking my bishop, which is not pleasant. Um, Alright, I think the bishop has to go back. This isn't good. Not good. Again, um, I've been a bit outplayed at some point earlier in this game. <laughs> Alright, so is he going to just double? Okay, rook d1. Let's try and get some counterplay going again. Is he going to play knight takes f3? At least relieve me of that horrible knight. Which, um, um, do I want to take with this? G takes. Maybe I've got something on the g file. Okay, g takes. I'll cripple my own pawns just to, to see if I've got g-file threats with king h1 and rook g1 being a bit optimistic very optimistic well, did I have rook d7 there with the idea of rook b7 and I've just, just given up another pawn maybe that will make him a bit more complacent though that he's like two pawns up um, getting, get, getting back on the clock at least a little bit okay so here there's no rook d8 deflecting um, that queen. What about just queen g4, rook g5? Queen g4, rook g5, but... Maybe that's okay anyway. I want to get his... Oh, no, no, no. Rook g5 and queen f3. Okay, I think I'll play queen e3 here. So just trying to keep control of the f3 pawn. So if rook c3, rook d3... I'm just two pawns down here for nothing, it seems. Not good, not good. But rook c1 uh, is interesting. No, it's not. Okay, so this is another grovelly type position. Um, if I can get in rook g1, though, would I have some frets? Rook g1, especially at this time limit. Okay, here, queen e4, is that possible? I'll try it. If he harasses my queen again, maybe queen e2. Or even queen b7. Not queen e2. But now he's got rook d2. So this is not brilliant again, it's got to be said. Um, Alright, I have to go for the exchange of queens. But um, he's down to a minute on the bright side. So there's a balance between time and the clock and other factors. If bishop d4, rook a3 maybe, as a resource, um, as annoying, well, he might just play just rook c6. So it's not a major resource. But, you know, his clock's ticking down. So I would expect him to start playing a bit quicker. But it's, his move speed seems to be remarkably consistent. You know, com so, you know he's got... Um, you know, hasn't got that much time left, but he's, he's been using his time. Okay, rook a6, I wonder. This end game is probably um, awful. And I think, okay, rook d6. So is there a pin? Bishop f2, rook d2. So I'm indirectly defending f2. But uh, if I can get in king g2, then maybe I can try and uh, put some stiffer resistance up. Um, so with rook b1, because my bishop is doing a nice job on g3. Well, it was. Oh, dear. Okay, 17 seconds. I'm afraid, guys, I'm going to just try and win this on time. I know it's terrible, but it is five-minute chess. So there's a big difference between this and um, correspondence chess. If you're in a theoretically lost position in correspondence, then you might as well just resign sometimes. Um, but uh, in five minutes... Um, I think this is fair game to play on for a little bit more. So he's only got five seconds left. But, um, okay, I'm going to have to sack the rook just to try and try and avoid... Um, oh, he lost on time. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, it was an awful game, I don't know. The opponents are playing very well at around this level on the, on the five-minute auto pairing on the ICC. Um, let's have, have a look. So it was a bit of a disaster in the opening again, despite my 
efforts to try and get something out of the opening. The opponent played very comfortably again. You know, they're playing very fluently these openings, even on just this five-minute chess. And so in this position, it seems, you know, I, I went to pawn down with this. Maybe this was asking for it, this e5. I didn't need to do that. Um, maybe just knight c2 is a lot more prudent here. And then just trying to play, you know, slowly, king h1, f3, you know, just, just playing the position a bit more slowly and carefully. So this, this was a bit uh, over, overkill. I'd imagine the knight was still on d4. It was ridiculous to try and open his king up. But there's obviously no king issue here. Except, I don't know, maybe rook d7. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave any comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.